Hi guys, good afternoon once again. Welcome back once again to The Edward. I'm your host, Eddie, and in this afternoon's video, I will be discussing my thoughts and reaction on the big announcement that came earlier this week that uh, up-and-coming actor Alden Ehrenrich, that is how I'm deciding to pronounce it because I have been unable to find out how to properly say his name, but it looks like it's Ehrenrich, or Ehrenreich, I should say, Alden Ehrenreich, who recently appeared in the comedy Hail Caesar, has indeed has indeed been confirmed to sign on to play the young Han Solo in the upcoming Han Solo anthology story, which is uh, set to debut in theaters in 2018. Uh, we know very little about the movie except uh, who is uh, directing it. I'm not sure if they're writing it as well, but I know they're directing it. Is uh, creative team Phil Lord and Chris Miller, obviously the geniuses who brought us uh, the Lego movie. Love that movie. And uh, also the TV show The Last Man on Earth. Uh, they are set to direct and now of course we have picked out their star. Alden Ehrenreich is going to be playing a young Han Solo in his own spin-off movie. So exciting news guys. Very exciting. You know what I found was really interesting about this news story is that it debuted a day or two days after May the 4th day. You know, Star Wars Day, may the 4th be with you. Because I felt like Star Wars Day would have been the perfect opportunity to make this kind of announcement or to reveal this information on all days of the week. Why not Star Wars Day? Like, why not May the 4th be with you day? I mean, I think a lot of people, myself included, were, including, were expecting some kind of announcement from Disney or from Lucasfilm or something regarding the next Star Wars project, whether or not it was going to be the revelation for Episode 8's title or uh, perhaps uh, the announcement of the casting of the young Han Solo film which we did get, except it wasn't on May the 4th. It was like a day or two days afterwards. But, oh well, at least we have an, a, an official confirmation now, so that's exciting. Uh, I personally was uh, have not seen this guy in um, any movies. I did want to see Hail Caesar. I still have not gotten around to seeing it yet, and I wanted to because I'm a huge Coen Brothers fan. And uh, now I definitely want to see it because I want to see how this, how this guy, uh, what this guy's... Uh, acting ranges or talent is in, at least in this movie I mean I can't judge him off of one performance but uh, I thought he looked a hell of a lot like uh, the young Harrison Ford at least in the face he's kind of got the face and the crooked smile down almost so uh, it's going to be interesting to see him uh, donning the classic uh, white shirt black vest costume with the classic uh, uh, pistol and the holster uh, hanging down from his side so that'll be uh, that'll be exciting to see uh, I do think we're going to get Chewbacca in the movie. I think that's just, you know, it's just a matter of uh, official, uh, making it official. But I think it's pretty much a given. Chewbacca will appear in the movie. I do not think it will be Peter Mayhew. Just like Harrison Ford, he too is uh, aging quite dearly. And uh, he is not as uh, active as he used to be, obviously, when he first made those movies. But, uh, you know, Chewbacca it doesn't really matter who plays him because ultimately it'll be just a guy in a suit. Now, I know I'm going to get heat for saying that because Peter Mayhew d has done a wonderful job bringing this beloved classic character to life. But uh, somebody else will uh, wear the costume from now on, or at least in this uh, spin off movie. So that'll be exciting. What I am curious about is. Like, just how much of a prequel or a spinoff is this going to be? Because this guy, this actor, is quite young. He's almost, he's about my age, if not a year younger. And uh, Han Solo, when he first meets Obi-Wan and Luke, uh, as we all know, is in his early 30s. At least in, an, I mean, just mathematically, that's how old Harrison Ford was in 1977, was 30, 33 years old. So... I mean, but point, my point being is that Han Solo, by the time he meets Obi-Wan and Luke and he's introduced to the Rebel Alliance and whatnot, uh, he's already in his early 30s. This guy is like in his early 20s. Now, true, the movie does not come out until I believe the uh, release date for now until this changes is May 25th, 2018. That very well could change. You know, we still have, you know, we still have about two years to go until we actually see anything from this movie. You know, all they've done so far is told us who's directing it and who's uh, going to be playing the young Han Solo. So there's still quite a gap, uh, quite a time period to do uh, between now and uh, that movie's release date, if they stick to their May 2018 release date. 
So, uh, like I said, it was just a matter of time before they confirmed Chewbacca and whatnot. But uh, maybe this movie will be set, you know, quite a few years before A New Hope happens. You know, maybe it'll show a very young Han Solo when he first uh, is uh, finds Chewbacca or he saves him from the Empire. Now, I don't know if they plan on using expanded universe material. I bet you a lot of hardcore Han Solo and Chewbacca fans would love to see that. See the story of Han Solo rescuing Chewbacca from the clutches of the Empire in his smuggler days. But uh, I don't know if we'll see that or not. If we were to, cool. That's, that's fine with me. That sounds awesome. That would be really cool to see on the big screen. But I'm sure whatever story that Phil Lord and Chris Miller have cooking up is going to be awesome. And I'm really excited about it. I personally do not have a problem with this casting decision. He looks all right to me. You know, like I said, he really, I think he has it down in the face. And I'm sure that uh, he is going to give us his best performance uh, that he possibly can give us. I know it's asking a lot to fill in the boots of the original Han Solo, but if uh, Disney and Lucasfilm and the directors have confidence in, in this guy, then so will I. That's the way I'm looking at it. If they think, if they truly believe he is the right guy to play this, then we've got to trust their decision. Because they nailed it with Force Awakens. Rogue One looks amazing. Episode 8 sounds amazing. I think this is a pretty solid decision they made casting Alden Ehrenreich. So I'm for it. Uh, in other movie news, uh, recently it was uh, confirmed earlier this week that uh, Ben Affleck, who's currently in London working uh, on the production of Justice League Part 1, uh, you know, I think uh, Jennifer Garner brought their kids over so they could spend some time with their dad. And of course, there are all the rumors about those two getting back together and whatnot, blah, blah, blah. I don't really care about that. But what it, I do care about is that he is now officially confirmed as an executive producer on the Justice League Part 1, which will put you Zack Snyder, uh, Zack Snyder haters to rest. <laughs> well, not to rest, but it should put your mind at ease because, you know, uh, you know, I know a lot of people blame Snyder for the outcome of Batman v Superman, at least people who hated it or didn't like it. If you didn't hate it, they didn't like it. I know Snyder is is uh, easy to you know is uh, easy to blame for a lot of things in his movies. So naturally, of course, that's one of he was one of the main um, he was one of the main focal points for blame. But uh, I don't think he deserved it. I love the movie. I thought he did a fantastic job, and I trust him with Justice League. But for those of you who don't trust him with Justice League, this news should come as kind of like a sigh of relief because Ben Affleck. A lot of people loved Affleck as Batman and Bruce Wayne, and a lot of people admire him even more as a filmmaker. Maker. People loved the town. They loved Argo. If he's an executive producer on Justice League and working very much with Zack Snyder, in fact, more so than he did with him on Batman v Superman, because we don't know if he actually did any rewrites or if he had any creative control. It sounds like Ben Affleck will have a lot more creative control. I don't know how much, but it's certainly a decent amount of creative control in collaborating with Zack Snyder so they can make Justice League the truly epic film that I believe it's going to be. So that's a big uh, sigh. That's a, that should be a big sigh of relief to those of you who are not fans of Zack Snyder, but you are DC fans. So I hope uh, you guys find that reassuring. I find it exciting. Uh, I mean, it, I think it's great that he not only is he returning as Batman Bruce Wayne, but now he's the executive producer on the film. That's great. Uh, you know, this, these are very, very exciting times. Very exciting couple of days. You know, we had the Russell Crowe announcement that he'll be playing Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde in the upcoming Mummy movie. The Universal MonsterVerse is building. Oh, a lot of exciting stuff, guys. Lots of exciting stuff. Well, I uh, hope you found this video informative and enjoyable here on The Edward. Thanks again so much for stopping by. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this one. Check out my Facebook page in the description down below. Also, don't forget to leave your thoughts, opinions, and your feedback down below in the comments section. I'd love to hear from everybody I've got about what you guys think of the Han Solo casting, Ben Affleck becoming an executive producer on Justice League. Please leave your thoughts and opinions down below. As usual, Let's please, please, please keep it civil and be respectful of one another's beliefs and opinions, of course. Thanks again for stopping by. Have a great rest of the weekend. Go out and see Captain America's Civil War. I will be seeing it tonight, and I will be posting my film review shortly after that. Thanks again, guys, for stopping by. Have a great rest of the day, and of course, until next time, may the Force be with you.